In this video, we're going to look at prompt design strategies. In the last video, we talked about markdown format, and here we're gonna look at how you can actually use that to get a lot of structured output. And so the example that I like to use, just because it's so useful to show the contrast, is asking ChatGPT to generate a Dungeons and Dragons character. I created a set of prompts that you can use to create a Dungeons and Dragons character and play a Dungeons and Dragons game, help you DM and those kinds of things. And it quickly became one of the most popular videos on my YouTube channel uh, and prompted me to frankly begin exploring more with, with artificial intelligence because it's been so, so fun and frankly rewarding with the comments and feedback that I've received. But to show the uh, effectiveness of giving a well-designed prompt to ChatGPT to get a well-designed response. I'm going to I'm going to use that example here today. So, I'm just going to ask it to create a Dungeons and a Dragons character. And I've done this a couple times as I've prepared for this video just kind of to test it out. And what's interesting is, yeah, you, you just never know what you're going to get. So, first on this one it's all like, I guess I'll create an image. Um, but, you know, that's not what I wanted. I wanted it to uh, know create me the text to fill out a character sheet, right? And then let's see what it does. It might ask me a question. All right, so here's an example outline you can use. And it's not actually helping me do it. It's just saying, here's what you would do. And so now I'm gonna stop it again. <laughs> no, I want you to make the character sheet, right? So this, this completely underlines my point, which is what I'm trying to say is, if you don't, give it enough detail or enough context, it doesn't know how to respond. Remember we talked about large language models, they, they need context, they've been fed a lot of text, and all they're really doing is predicting what might be an appropriate response. And so anything you give it uh, could lead to a number of responses, like potentially an infinite number of responses, because frankly, with very little context, uh, there's a lot of things that could happen, right? Like in this situation, we saw that it did three different things before it finally got to creating a character. And so I want to show you how you can get um, not only a character generated immediately, but exactly what you want. And so I'm going to provide, this is a prompt that I designed. And again, this was in my YouTube video. And this is a very detailed prompt. If you've done any kind of research on ChatGPT and how to use it well, you've already discovered that one of the pro tips is to tell it to act as. Act as a tax expert. Act as a professional chef. Act as a personal trainer. And what you're doing when you tell it to act as some of these professions is you're giving it needed context so that it knows how to perform. It reaches into that area of its neural network and starts to pull out information that's relevant there. Now, you'll see here that the response is short, but this is the key. It's done exactly as I have told it to do, all right? So this is one of those prompt design strategies is you can tell it, hey, here's information you need to, new, need to know, now wait. Before you generate output, I'm gonna give you even more instructions, right? And so here I've told it, you are an expert Dungeons and Dragons character generator. So I've given it that act as language, right? And now I'm telling it, you're gonna generate a character for a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition character sheet, only create the sheet when a user gives you this prompt. So make a certain level, a certain race, a certain class of character. And so I'm going to ask it to make me a level one human bard, okay? Now, could I add additional details and will ChatGPT incorporate that into its response? Yes, I could tell it to create a female human bard. Even though I, I haven't told it that I will, all it knows is that it needs those three basic pieces of information, but it absolutely will incorporate additional details into its response. So you're not completely leaving it up to the computer. You, you still have a lot of control over how you want this to look. However, I've already given it a detailed set of instructions and we're gonna see how this works uh, and how I've designed this prompt to function, okay? So first things first, this is a heading one, which is exactly what I asked for and I'll show you how that works. If you watched my markdown format video, you'll see that it has this number sign, which is the format for heading one. I said, after receiving this prompt, then generate the character sheet according to these specific instructions. And the first specific instruction is to give me a heading one 
with the character sheet for the name of our new character. And then I want it to make a markdown table, two row markdown table with these things, and then a separate table with these things. Let's see how it's doing, followed by a mid journey description that's in bold, because that's what the asterisks mean. So as we scroll down, let's see how it's doing. Yep, basic information, it's giving me the heading, giving me the markdown table, physical characteristics, and then I've got a mid-journey description. For those of you who are familiar with mid-journey, it's an, it's an artificial intelligence image generator. You can, you can copy and paste this into mid-journey, and that tends to function quite well. Uh, we see some additional things that uh, I've asked it for, all in the correct format that I have asked it for as well, and you can see that it's legible. I've got headings, I've got tables. I can quickly see what's going on and then this allows me to transfer it to a character sheet if I want, or uh, I've created a series of prompts that are in ChatGPT, again, with this structured format that's detailed, that tells it exactly what I want it to do to allow a player to play Dungeons & Dragons with their AI-generated character sheet right inside the platform. And so that's been exciting to see that you can design a prompt in this way and using these markdown strategies and detailed strategies to get very specific and high quality output. And so that's one of the things we wanted to share in this course and why you should also sign up to our advanced course once we release that because we'll go into some of our deeper into some of the strategies we use to make that a reality.